This week on Seminarium, uh, David Rhodes is writing about hospitality in the classroom, the strategies by which he is, seeks to make the learning space a hospitable one to his students. And Philip Rouge Jones, in Right Alongside Them, is writing about the strategies by which he presents himself, helps learners to understand that he is a uh, frustrated co-learning writer alongside of them. And I was interested because both of these posts, uh, it seemed to me, are offering vulnerability as an aspect of strength in leadership. And what I was reminded of was the guides that used to take us on canoe trips when I was, uh, when I was, in, when I was in school. Uh, I remember one guide, uh, this was up in the Boundary Waters or in Quetico Wilderness Park in Ontario, Canada. Uh, I remember Jean-Pierre, who was quiet, almost taciturn. Uh, Beth, a garrulous Minnesotan, uh, laughed a lot. Uh, very different personalities, but both of them gentle in their leadership. You know, for example, I know they didn't live in the Boundary Waters or Quetico Wilderness Park. They had lives, uh, but they had so made the space their own. Uh, they were so comfortable there that it was uh, you would believe that they lived there all the time. And out of that comfort, they were able to offer us hospitality. They were able to make this strange and forbidding uh, place hospitable to a bunch of frightened novices to canoeing and canoe camping and to portaging. That same hospitality that David is seeking to learn to be able to offer to his students. And I remember how we would listen to their instructions because we learned so quickly that their instructions worked. You know, if I uh, put up my tent, if I pitched my tent the way that Pierre suggested I did, then I would probably stay dry that night. Whereas if I went my own way on it, I might spend the rest of the week sleeping in a wet, mildewy sleeping bag. If I packed my pack the way Beth taught me to, then I would find it a manageable load to carry on the portages. Uh, if not, uh, maybe I would find it unmanageable or at least certainly painful. And so in the morning, so for example, if, uh, if, if, if Pierre or Beth were to look at the sky and say, well, we, we better get an early start this morning, well, we would all do it. Uh, they didn't have to threaten us that if anyone wasn't ready by a certain time, we would have to, I don't know, paddle extra laps around the lake or something like that. We didn't need such artificial motivations because their leadership was, was motivating because of its effectiveness. And their expertise was enough. You know, and, and similarly to how, uh, to how Philip says, you know, they were in it with us. If we were warm or cold, if we were uh, f uh, full or hungry, if we were dry or wet, they were sharing those conditions with us. They had no outs to go off to a hotel room or something to escape the consequences of our foolishness. Uh, they were stakeholders with us in the decisions that we all made together. A leadership of hospitality and of co-stakeholding, a leadership of vulnerability as an aspect of strength, that, anyway, is what I was getting from the post this week. Uh, get the links in the description area below this video for yourself. Uh, go take a read of David and Philip's posts, and uh, tell us in the comments there what you're getting from what they're saying this week. Thanks very much on behalf of seminariumblog.org.